If any questions, just raise your hand and we'll take off. So, uh, maybe you can introduce yourself before asking your question. Uh, <clears throat> my name is Nawab Khan. I'm the correspondent here in Brussels of the Kuwait news agency Kuna. And my question is the following. Uh, the issue of Palestine has been introduced in the International Criminal Court, I think. So can you please tell us uh, at what stage it is there now, this issue, in the ICC at The Hague? Thank you. The question is aimed at... Yeah, okay. Well, as you are aware, uh, we have... Uh, asked the International Criminal Court, uh, you know, to look into the situation in the Palestinian territory uh, back in January uh, this year. And since uh, uh, January 16th, um, uh, uh, Ms. Bin Souda has announced that it has really opened an, uh, you know, initial uh, inquiry to look into uh, the situation in the Palestinian occupied territories and to see if there is, there are enough evidence to, uh, to uh, uh, show that, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, that uh, criminal actions have been really taken uh, against the Palestinian people uh, since the last Israeli uh, attack on Gaza, uh, June of uh, last year. Uh, we have been since then in constant contact with, with the court. I have visited them a uh, uh, number of times. I have made a submission to the, to the court uh, regarding three important files. One is the Israeli aggression uh, against Gaza, the last one in, in June 2014. The second about the status of settlement. And the third about you know, pris prisoners, uh, Palestinian prisoners in Israeli prisons. Uh, after uh, the attack on the Dawabsha family, 31st of uh, last July, uh, and uh, the burning to death of uh, the family, uh, I uh, went to uh, uh, The Hague and submitted uh, an additional uh, material related to the same uh, submission regarding uh, that particular uh, uh, attack. Uh, we are uh, continuing you know, uh, discussions with, with the court. We hope that uh, a delegation of the court will come to visit uh, the Palestinian occupied territories you know, uh, soon. Uh, and uh, when they will complete their uh, preliminary uh, inquiry, they will decide if there is enough evidence uh, to show that uh, an open, uh, uh, you know, an official investigation will be open or not. So uh, this is really the, the status of the, uh, you know, the situation in the in the IC, uh, ICC. Thank you. Uh, yes, madam. Microphone, please. They are not uh, hearing you. Ah. Ça marche maintenant. Perfect. From Agence Europe, the European Union is calling for a broader international support group, broader than the quartet. Do you think that would be a good idea? And at the end of September in the UN, there will be a meeting of the quartet plus several ministers from uh, Arab countries and the Arab League. Do you think that's a good idea? And do you think it's necessary to support the peace process? Thank you. As you are aware, uh, the, uh, the quartet was established a long time ago. Uh, since then until now, uh, not that much has been achieved uh, through the, the quartet. And so every time that uh, uh, an internal or an external uh, you know, discussion takes place about uh, the usefulness of the quartet and the sustainability of the quartet, you know, new ideas uh, pump in. Uh, including, you know, the, uh, uh, holding uh, another meeting by inviting uh, representatives of three Arab states uh, plus the Secretary General of the Arab League. I don't know if that will make that big difference or will shift, you know, the gear into uh, new uh, realities when it comes to this. 
Um, uh, you know, our expectation from the quartet is uh, is very much uh, limited at the lowest level of uh, you know expectation. But I hope that uh, you know uh, uh, you know activating the quartet might uh, induce uh, a new uh, uh, hopes and might really reactivate uh, the process again. You know, the last time that the quartet has met uh, was last year. And so uh, a, a complete year has passed without any uh, uh, movement whatsoever by the quartet, which really allows you to know that uh, the quartet you know, uh, is an annual event uh, that only meets uh, when there is pressure or when there is criticism. And then you know, it, it goes to sleep for another year or so. Uh, I hope that this time it, the situation uh, might be different, uh, especially in the wake of uh, uh, a new call by uh, the, foreign, uh, the French foreign minister, uh, Mr. Fabius, who has really called for the setup of an international uh, support group. Uh, I hope that this really fits well within uh, that call, or really uh, it could be an, an, an uh, you know uh, uh, co compl uh, complement to the to the uh, uh, to the work of uh, the, the idea proposed by the French uh, foreign minister. Thank you. Questions? Any other? It's quite yes, sir. Since you are holding this conference in Brussels, which is, as you know, the political capital of the EU, I know you referred uh, to you in your speech, but what are the concrete measures that you want EU to take? I mean, to resolve the Palestine question. Thank you. I will leave, uh, you know, uh, the answer to uh, our uh, ambassador uh, in New York, who's been uh, behind uh, this this meeting. Okay, thank you. Well, uh, thank you for asking this question. Uh, the, this question is, as you have stated, why are we convening this meeting? Uh, the three organizations, the Committee on the Exercise of the Inalienable Rights of the Palestinian People in collaboration with the Organization of Islamic Conference and the League of Arab States in Brussels. We are convening it here because, as you stated, that this is the capital of Europe, uh, the capital of the decision-making uh, process of uh, the 28 countries that constitute the European Union. We know that the European Union have taken uh, important steps in the direction of uh, dealing in a practical way with this illegal campaign uh, or enterprise we call of colonization, the settlement activities. They have taken a very important steps in uh, adopting the guidelines, which means that they want their funding uh, policies to be in line with their political stated objectives of characterizing settlement activities as illegal. And also in line of the fact that the European Union is taking bold steps in requesting lab labeling products from uh, uh, the settlements in the occupied territory. And these two steps, along with other steps taken by other European countries with regard to the banking system, here I'm referring to the decisions of some banks in the Netherlands in, and in Sweden and in other places. These are uh, but practical steps that put us on the verge of expanding this, uh, uh, this initial uh, activities into adopting a comprehensive policy that would include the European Union and possibly reach the General Assembly of the United Nations, where we can le legislate a whole uh, regime of quote-unquote sanctions against Israel, the occupying power, because for a long period of time of reiterating principal position, saying that settlements are illegal without consequences, that has not deterred Israel from continuing this, legal, this illegal behavior. Now, we are contemplating moving into a new uh, uh, arena, uh, an arena of adopting uh, more practical steps 
in addition to what we are doing as the State of Palestine, including in the ICC, uh, that uh, we are determined this time that we want to see different results. We are determined to uh, bring all the pressure that we can collectively in order to stop this uh, illegal behavior and therefore to uh, remove a major obstacle from the path of meaningful political process that could possibly in a collective way, as the French are suggesting, could open the door for a meaningful political process that would allow us within a limited period of time reach a political agreement that would lead within a limited period of time for the end of occupation and the independence of our state and therefore saving the two-state solution. For all these reasons, we are here in Brussels at this particular moment, and we are very happy of this large turn uh, participation in this meeting. And uh, we actually were eager to have more meetings with the European Parliament and also with officials from the European uh, a union, but we know that they are busy with meetings, but we are also meeting with officials from uh, the government uh, of uh, Belgium. So we are happy to be here. This is a very important meeting, and uh, we will continue this effort with the European Union because it is a significant partner with us in this struggle for upholding the law and putting an end to this illegal behavior of Israel, uh, as uh, we call it, you know, the uh, settlement uh, enterprise or settlement campaign. Thank you. More questions? Yes, sir. Sabah uh, al-Khair. Good morning. Adil al-Jabri from the Morocco News Agency. I have a question that I would like to address to Mr. Maliki. Uh, Your Excellency, uh, Minister, the question of Palestine is being di discussed uh, in the uh, Committee on Jerusalem, uh, which uh, uh, has uh, not met for over a year. Is this uh, committee, does this committee still have a vital role in defending the qu Palestinian question? Uh, how are you coordinating uh, uh, with this uh, committee, especially as regards international meetings on the question of Palestine? No doubt uh, the Committee on Jerusalem is ex extremely important, uh, uh, in, uh, especially in our relentless efforts in order to raise awareness uh, as to the situation of uh, uh, occupied uh, uh, Jerusalem, especially in uh, the Al-Aqsa Mosque, uh, and we are uh, in constant uh, communication with uh, our friend, uh, the uh, Moroccan Ministry of uh, uh, Foreign Affairs. Uh, and uh, as you know, after uh, the repeated uh, attacks against uh, Jerusalem and the Al-Aqsa Mosque, uh, we had requested a emergency summit uh, of the OIC. And after having achieved a quorum, uh, the acceptance of 20 29 member states, uh, we uh, started looking for a venue, and the uh, Moroccan uh, Kingdom, uh, 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 we thank uh, the Kingdom of Morocco for hosting this uh, summit, uh, which only testifies uh, to uh, the importance uh, that uh, the Kingdom of Morocco attaches uh, to the question of uh, uh, Palestine, and we thank the Kingdom of Morocco for for hosting such a summit. As you know, the uh, c c committee is uh, not requested only to hold meetings. It also uh, supports uh, projects. Uh, and uh, there is an important uh, uh, funding uh, pr uh, project. Uh, the Kingdom of Morocco also funds uh, a project 
projects uh, in order uh, to uh, support uh, the resilience and the resistance of uh, the Palestinian inhabitants of Jerusalem. Uh, we, of course, uh, uh, attach a great deal of importance uh, to the role of the Committee of Jerusalem, and I have uh, noted uh, that His Excellency, the Ambassador of the Kingdom of Morocco, is with us today, uh, which also testifies uh, to the importance attached uh, by the Kingdom of Morocco to the question of Palestine and the Israeli uh, practices. Therefore, we would like to continue coordination with the Committee on Jerusalem. Uh, we know that the committee will have to shoulder in, uh, its responsibility vis-a-vis -vis the city of Jerusalem and the holy places. Thank you. Sir, Maliki, hello. Uh, Your Excellency, Mr. Maliki, uh, do you have uh, the date of the summit that uh, will be held? I'm not going to go into these details because, you know, whenever an emergency uh, summit is held, it should be held as soon as possible. This is extremely important for us in Palestine to continue facing the uh, the is settlers' attacks. And there, you know that these attacks have continued for three weeks, uh, three weeks in East Jerusalem. And there are plans to uh, storm Al-Aqsa Mosque, and there are continued uh, calls to occupy and to storm al Aqsa Mosque on the 13th of this uh, uh, month, and I think more measures should be taken to foil any uh, attempts at uh, over at, uh, attacking the Al-Aqsa. There are continued talks with the government of Morocco with a view to uh, taking the efforts aimed at uh, host, uh, hosting this uh, summit of OIC in Morocco. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Excellencies. Uh, please use no, another 10 minutes to relax a bit before the next session starts. Thank you, journalists, and um, see you next time. Thank you.